Hello, welcome to another in my series of short videos talking about features of IBM MQ. This time we'll be looking at what's new in FixPack 4 for version 8. FixPack 4 for MQ version 8 is now available. Unlike some previous updates to MQ, this one, while it's got a bunch of new function, doesn't require the command level to be updated for the queue managers. The first new function in FixPack 4 is the ability to set a cap on the message expiry. This is a way for the administrator to override expiry value set for any messages from applications. It's been implemented using the custom attribute on queues and topics. Custom is another way of being able to add function through the service stream without requiring an update to the command level. It gives us the opportunity to maybe change the implementation in future versions of MQ, but the capability itself will be carried forward. With this, you can override what an application sets for the expiry, even if it sets unlimited expiry on the message. This means that you can force a message to be expired after a certain amount of time. There have been various sample programs in MQ over the years to format some specific events such as activities and accounting and statistics, but there's never been a sample that will format the standard instrumentation events such as queue full or an authorization failure. With FixPack 4, we've solved that by adding a new program called MQS EVT. As a sample program, this includes the source code so that you can take it, change it as you want. And here we see an example of the output of this sample program. Part of the development of this sample program required the implementation of a way to look up the MQI constants and turn them into strings. This has been made available as a new family header file, cmqstrc.h, which will be maintained with new versions of MQ. It provides a simple way to map the numbers to a string, a bit like the str error function, but broader in scope, a bit more like the MQ constants lookup method that we have in the Java interface. One of the reasons for developing this new sample program was to test another new capability that's provided in FixPack 4. MQ has configuration and command events to give an audit trail of who's made changes to the definitions and the attributes of objects in MQ. But one of the things that has been missing has been the ability to track all of the changes made to the access control lists with commands like setMQAlt. With FixPack 4, that gap has been closed. There's now command and configuration events for those operations, whether they are done from the setMQAlt commands, the PCF equivalents, or the MQSC set authric variations of the command. And here we can see an example of the command and configuration events generated by one such update. It's now easier to check the expiry date of certificates. There's been an option to the command run MQ AKM to show the expiry dates, but this has always been displayed in a locale specific way. By adding a new option to the command, we can see this in a locale independent way, which is much easier for sorting, making it easier to see which certificates are soon to expire. The last couple of fixed packs have delivered some early versions of integration of the MQLite clients with the queue manager, being able to define and manage AMQP channels. With FixPack 4, that technical preview phase comes to an end. The listener and the channel definitions and all of the other administration are now part of the core queue manager product. This means that MQ version 8 FixPack 4 will be available not just as a FixPack, but as a manufacturing refresh, allowing people to install from scratch complete image containing the AMQP listener. When MQ is acting as a transaction manager, controlling resources such as databases, it's always been a requirement to specify in the QMINI file 
how the queue manager connects to the database, which could include a user ID and password. Having a password in the clear is obviously not a good idea, and there have been various samples over the years to show how that can be avoided. Fixpack 4 provides a tool in the product to remove the need for having an a plain text password in the QMini file. A new command will take the user ID and password for connecting to a database and stick it in an obfuscated separate INI file for availability when the queue manager needs to connect to that database. Support Pack MH03 was a way of validating the queue manager's SSL or TLS configuration. It would do things like look for missing files, check the keyring attribute on a queue manager, validate some of the certificate information, and so on. That support pack was not able to work with newer versions of MQ. And so rather than update the support pack itself, what we've done is take it and rename it to MQ cert check for MQ certificate check. And it's now part of the product. The FixPack4 development activity includes a new packaging for the MQ clients on Linux and Windows. This is designed to make it much simpler to package client runtime libraries with your own applications, making it much easier to redistribute. The client is now available as a zip or a tar file, which you can simply unpack into your own directory without requiring a real installation. License terms mean that it's now legal to include these libraries within your application bundle that you redistribute. The client packages are, of course, still available in their standard format uh, for installation, which would be needed for developers. But this new environment, this new way of working, we think will be a much better way to make applications available once they've been developed. And that's it for FixPack 4. As we go forward, look for this kind of incremental delivery to continue, with small amounts of changes being delivered more rapidly than waiting for the large releases that we've had in the past. And that's it for this update. Please join me again on this channel next time we look at new features of MQ. Goodbye.